I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to another episode of Dye Pop PS. Before I even talk about today's project, I wanted to showcase something with bare yarn and mention dye lot differences. I mean, okay, it's not entirely fair to say dye lot differences, but mill lot differences. Uh, and I don't know if one of these is a super old Swish DK. I mean, the labels are very different. <laughs> not only are these two different lots of Swish DK, um, there are lot numbers, which I'll show you on the labels, but the labels themselves are different. And so I think this skein right here is a much older milled version than uh, this one here. Okay, and here, this is lot. 316403 and this is lot 256473. So they are different. And I'm not sure if this will pick up on camera, but the older lot is a little bit more cream. The newer lot is slightly more yellow. And so I don't know if this means that there was a milk change or just if there's a difference in between the bleaching of the wool and processing it. The old batch feels slightly softer, the new one feels maybe like there's a hint more oil on it. Like maybe this is a hair dryer. They're both very soft and very lovely. And I doubt that you would be able to detect a difference once they're dyed. Unless, of course, we're doing a technique where some of that bare yarn is showing through. So this is just something I wanted to point out because uh, when you're picking your bare yarn for a project, uh, you might depending on the color you're going for, you might want to start with the same lot. Now, I'm planning on dyeing the three skeins from one lot the same color white. This one I was planning on having be the yarn mop, but I figured it was worth just chatting about how there can be some color differences batch to batch in the bare yarn, and so that's something that you might need to consider, because if you were going to just knit straight with the yarn and knit with this and go to here, uh, there would be a perceivable difference between those whites. But anyway, I'm going to go pre-soak all of this yarn. Um, I'll use a different color zip tie for our yarn mop so I can differentiate between them when what. Uh, and let's go talk about today's project. But I'm going to pre-soak the yarn in just plain tap water for at least 30 minutes. Last month I asked the Chemnitz patrons to pick an inspiration photo for this episode of Dye Pop PS. And the patrons picked this, I think it's a field of lavender likely. Uh, the colors are gorgeous and the images I picked all had like a color palette pulled with them and I think I'm gonna kind of aim for that color palette. It's really gorgeous and I don't know I'm really excited to see what I might create here. Here are the colors that I selected to go along with the color palette that whatever website I used pulled for the image. Uh, I want to use lilac, royal purple, blued steel, moss green, and lichen. Now of these colors, I know that lichen, moss, and lilac all break. And so I both want to do something with the dry dye powder because I want something that feels a little bit floral, but I'm also a little bit hesitant because of the breaking. And so part of me wants to dissolve these in liquid form and try something that way, but I also really want the organic, free-flowing nature of the colors. So I don't know if I'm going to end up doing two colorways today, but I figure that I will go for the dry dye powder and then if that doesn't hit the color story that I'm hoping for, then maybe I'll film a uh, dye pot weekly with this color palette and try to go about this another way as a bit of a follow up. In addition to these colors, I also have hyacinth pulled. I have in my, um, I've also pulled the navy, even though I don't have it over here, uh, just in case I, those tones feel like they might fit better. Lilac is a gorgeous purple. Sometimes it might lean a little bit too pink uh, when it breaks, but we'll, we'll see how things go. In my 4-inch deep full-size catering steam pan, which, by the way, if you want to learn more about the equipment or the yarn that I'm using in my video, I do have affiliate links in the video description, and I might earn commission if you make purchases through those links. Um, I just added 8 cups of water with 3 tablespoons of white vinegar. 
And now I'm bringing over our 400 grams of Swish DK yarn. Uh, one of them I will be removing, but this is how I'm adding acid into all the yarn because there was no acid in our pre-soak. And Swish DK is just 100% superwash merino wool. I don't know if I said that before. And just like we were pointing out the lot differences, this is the one that will become our yarn mop. You can tell it is a little bit brighter, a little bit less yellow than the other three skeins. But I'm gonna take this one out now, squeeze out that excess water, and this will be the yarn mop from the video. I have no idea if you can hear a neat barking outside, but I'm going to bring him back in in a moment. Right now I am rearranging the yarn, trying to spread it out, but have it sort of be arranged, untwisted here in the pan, and we may end up adding more water eventually. Actually, no, not eventually. Let's add more right now. Okay, I don't think we lost a lot of water volume uh, doing that with the yarn mop, but I want to allow our colors to spread and give us something floral and organic feeling here. Okay, so we have probably about 12 cups of water. The yarn is still both on the bottom of the pan, but some of it is still at the surface. Uh, and so this will help as we move dyes through some of the colors to go through multiple layers. But anyway, I'm gonna turn on the heat and we'll heat this up. And I'm gonna go put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, Safety Glasses, and Gloves because we're about to come over with dry dye powders. Okay, I think the star of the day is going to be lilac. And we're gonna start, yeah, that might be a little too pink. Uh, we're just gonna do a little bit of it at first. I think that this is one of those colors that behaves differently, whether you start cold or hot. Ooh, actually, you know what? Hot, this is doing what I want, and if anything, it's even more pigmented than I thought. I'm gonna have to use less. I may not need to use the uh, royal purple at all because I'm getting some of those deep purple notes in here already. Let's go for the lichen. Don't worry, I'll have to be adding more of all of these colors around. Oof, okay, on its own. This is giving me a very mossy color uh, where it's more concentrated. That is beautiful. I mean, so far, I'm feeling like I don't need the moss, and I don't need the deep purple. I think these two colors are doing everything so far. And then there's the blued steel, and I'm going to wait on that. Uh, and here's why. I think I want to use that for some speckles, and so I want to do what I want to do with these other colors first. But I'm going to go, I think I'm going to need to go a bit lighter. First, I want to do one heavy patch, but then I'm going a little bit lighter with our lilac. Wiping my hand on the yarn mop, screwing on the lid. Okay, and that's giving us some lighter color and then deeper color. I don't know if that's going to be too pink, or if I came in not fast enough. It is giving us some really nice subtle speckles though. So right here, that's about the color that I wanted. I think I'm going to need to do this a little bit faster. So I'm going to mix spoon close by. Do do do, light color, light color. Come in almost immediately. To work that through. I think that that's doing it for me. Okay, up here, let's go a little bit heavier and a little bit lighter. Okay, I like where this is going. I'm going to need to come in with the lichen. But this is doing what I wanted with just one purple. <laughs> oh, 
I am thrilled. Okay, I need to dry my fingers on something else. I love that I had a plan. Okay, let's go heavier with the lichen. Just so that way we have some that's heavier on all of the yarn. It's okay if it's not perfect. And you can see that we're gonna have some dye lot differences here because the way I'm doing this, the middle skein might have two patches of the darkest color and some of the others might just have one. Okay, I'm coming in really lightly. Still didn't feel that light. Okay, you know what, that's working. That's working. And see, I don't mind if we end up with some brownish tones or notes in here. Uh, and so some of these lighter patches, it's gonna feel a little bit more speckly and that's okay. And the color also may not go through as much of the yarn either. And so what I'm doing here to do this lightly and then immediately come in with the spoon so I'm holding the open container of jar in my hand, not touching it with the fingers I use for pinching. A little bit more. It's okay if that sits a minute. There. This is so floral. Oh my gosh. Uh, using colors that break have, has been magical for getting all of those different tones that I wanted. Maybe the green isn't bright enough, but I don't care. This is a stunning combination. Okay, and now I'm coming in with the blued steel, which can break. And I am lightly letting the color fall to sort of randomly, and not everywhere. And it is spreading out. Just sort of on some various places and sections. And it's sort of deepening some of those colors. And that's okay. If I wanted it to be sharper, then I could have had some citric acid in here. Uh, with it, but I don't mind. It's in some places deepening the green or the purple, and maybe in some places you can feel the color that it is, but I love the like, I don't know, the mess that it's bringing. And it's not messy, but like, oh, it's so pretty. I cannot wait to see what's happening on the other side. Oh my goodness. And I don't know if the camera was overexposed. I do have a light that's up here, and so that does change the way things look. I think this is a little bit more accurate than when I have the light on one side. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I'm curious. Okay, that is cleared. That is cleared. Okay, it seems like a lot of the color, I'm not tapping on the blue steel. Seems like a lot of the color has struck already. It's striking pretty quickly. Uh, I guess we are using three pre-metalized colors. Um, so I'm gonna set a timer for just five minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the heat to lows. We don't exactly need those bubbles. And I'm gonna pick up the yarn and flip her over. And as we do the flip, I'm going to attempt to expose the undyed yarn as much as possible on this other side. But we are getting good coverage. I have a feeling we will need multiple flips throughout this process, but that's fairly standard. And as I lay it down, like sometimes you can flip all the yarn together, but I'm trying to not have it lay on top of the other colors too, too much. But see, now you can see sort of where we have sections that were purple, sections that were green, and I'm gonna continue layering on the colors. 
This type of yarn tying is honestly my favorite type of technique. I love applying dry dye powders to a hot immersion bath, seeing what they do, and then sort of going with the flow of the colors and letting the momentum of how they're spreading speak to me and sort of help decide where I want to go with my color placement. Now, as we continue, things may blend. We may blend the purples and greens a bit. I'm not too worried about that, but I'm just so excited. And it's so, I don't know, something about this whole process is very cathartic. Lately, I've been doing so much cold application of colors, which is also super wonderful, but something about having that heat there, helping those colors strike quickly, just is a lot of fun. And I'm so glad that I went for this over using the liquid dyes, because I think that the organic nature of what's happening here is just so floral and awesome. The colors were striking pretty quickly, so I only waited five minutes in between each flip, and after the second flip, I was really just focusing on areas of the yarn that were a little bit more white. Not mining if some white is left, but wanting to break up any large patches. And so at some point I might have transitioned to uh, speckling a little bit more with our lilac and lichen versus spreading it through because maybe I didn't want to go, it to go through so many layers. But again, I'm letting the colors and the yarn talk to me as I'm making this colorway. As I finish up applying the dye, I want to take this opportunity to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Chemnitz patrons, including Michelle Martin, Tamara Svanes, Don Jans, Jessica Parco, Karen Siegel, and the rest of the Fiber patrons whose names you see on the screen right now, but also all of the patrons that follow along at the lower tiers without the verbal or written shout outs and everyone else who's following along for free. Whenever I have a massive announcement, um, sometimes the post will be available first for patrons, but then I release it as a free post. And so if you follow along the patron, even just for free, then you can get an email when I do have a public post. But anyway, Patreon is a really wonderful platform that allows you to support me directly. And you also get to help shape the direction of the content. And so a huge thank you to all of the Chemnitz patrons. I really appreciate all you do. If you wanna learn more about the Patreon, head over to patreon.com slash Chemnitz. And I'll also have a link down in the video description. All right, it has been about five minutes. Well, it's been exactly five minutes since the last time I added dye. And I'm just checking to see if there's any big, white patches like this. An area that could have been caught on the bottom with every earlier flip. Let's see the last one. I'm kind of just opening it up, shaking things out. Okay, this one is looking fairly okay. I think it's just these two little spots that I want to break up a little bit. And you know what? We may as well add some more purple in there. Okay, and so I'm coming in with some little bits of lilac. I'm just going to work that through. I might add a tiny bit more. But again, it's okay if there are white patches. I just didn't want any like major, major uh, areas that were just going to stay white. And we definitely have some more blue. We've got some breaking. It's all very pretty. And so I think, you know what, I'm going to add a tiny bit of green there. Just when you think you're done, you can always add a little bit more color. And even when you finish, if you look at the finished dry yarn and you're like, gee, there's like one little spot there. I wish it had more color. You can make it wet again and add more color. Like you're not limited to only adding color the first time. You can always over dye, even if it's just one little spot. But anyway, I am thrilled. And I'm so thrilled that I think that this lilac and lichen combination needs to be a feature again. Uh, these colors have just done something super magical. So anyway, I'm now going to heat the yarn for 30 minutes. Uh, 
to finish up the yarn. Had I ended up using all five colors, we would have created something that felt very magical. But because our two main colors were colors that broke, which means that instead of just getting the one hue, we see the colors separate maybe into some pinks and blues, maybe into some more greens and more reddish green leaning brown patches. Because of that color breaking, we're getting a lot of dimension just from the single color that we're using on there. And that, my friends, is awesome. So there's other times where if I was only using two main colors, things could have ended up feeling a little bit flat. Like there could have just felt like there wasn't a lot of dimension and variation in with the color. And because of the way we're also layering the color, so we're getting some mixing of that purple and green as well, but because the colors themselves in the powder form have so much dimension, we didn't need those other colors. I was getting those deeper purples and deeper green colors in addition to the lighter, more muted tones that I wanted. And so this is why I always recommend uh, sticking with your gut. And sometimes you might have a plan and you're like, I'm gonna use these five colors, but then you love what's happening with just two. So go for it, go for it. And that's the other thing with using an inspiration photo. You can start and then love what you're creating. And even though your original idea and plan was to go a step further, whether it's adding speckles or something, if you hit something that you love, you can stop. You don't have to go all the way with your idea. Of course you can, and sometimes, sometimes you might regret it. Sometimes you might be glad that even though you loved an intermediate result, that you pushed it on and did that extra step. Uh, there have been times when I've both had slight regrets, but also have been really grateful that I trusted the process and went for it. And so that's the thing about dyeing yarn that is so fun. It's that you're done when you decide you're done. And I don't know, it's just really freeing to dye by feel versus doing a recipe because it just gives that element of freedom. Now, dying by feel might be a little less reproducible, but it's still really fun. So, anyway, uh, I'll be back when we're done heating the yarn. It has been 30 minutes, so I'm now going to remove our yarn, and hopefully I'm not gonna, in that time, look at it and think, oh, coulda, shoulda, woulda. Uh, there's a lighter patch there. Nope, but there's color and dimension, and it's pretty. Oh my goodness. Oh. I love it. Okay, we've got our yarn mop, and I could steam set it, but today is one of those days when I feel like just immer like immersing it in this water. Now, it does already have some acid in it, and this is going to cause these colors to spread and soften, but you'll notice that we're not seeing tons of dye in the water, and that's because like even without heat, some of these colors are starting to strike. And you know what? This is beautiful too. Oh my goodness, this is so lovely. Okay, uh, I am gonna heat this for 30 minutes, then I'll remove it and I'll wash this one off camera. But once our other yarn cools, then we'll go ahead and wash that on camera so we can see if there's any bleeding or anything. Now we're gonna start washing the yarn. You know, I probably could have done a little bit more purple than green, but I don't care. I really like it. And the best thing is we're not seeing any color bleeding yet. The reason why I am excited about this is that sometimes, sometimes with dry powder applications, there can be undissolved dye on the surface of the yarn, which could result in some color bleeding. But I'm feeling optimistic with this pretty, pretty yarn. Yeah, no bleeding. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the yarn in my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Seeing the yarn dry, I'm even more excited about it. I was a little bit concerned during the dyeing process. It's not fair to say I'm concerned. If I was concerned, I would have said I was concerned. But I did feel like the colors maybe were gonna be a little more saturated. So I am thrilled with all of these light purples in here because, aha, here you can see there's an area where it's deep, but when the color spread, it's lighter. 
And so it worked to give us those, both the deep, I did want some deep, but also the pastel tones. So how do you think this compares to the image? Did I nail it? Well, I mean, I think balance-wise, I probably could have had green, the green be a little bit more of an accent and had more purple overall, but I just adore this. The whole colorway is so much fun, and I just love the non-repeating colorway like this because I'm not always the biggest fan of yarn and colors pooling when you're knitting, and so the proportion of... I guess, of the colors to one another and each strand will mix up a little bit and be a little bit varied. And so that'll give a more random distribution of the colors in a knit or crochet or even woven project. Of course, this is also the type of technique that does give us dye lot differences. Because within one pan, I am applying the colors sort of randomly all over. One skein could have a lot more purple in it, one could be more green, one could have more white. You could have subtle differences like that. Of course, if I was dyeing a more regular repeating colorway in one pan, there would also be potential dye lot differences there in the length of color sections and things. But the overall depth of color from skein to skein could be a little bit more similar. So this is the kind of thing where if you're worried about there being a more harsh difference when you shift colors, alternate rounds or rows a few times before you switch because that'll blend things together uh, a little bit more. And something like this will blend very cleanly, unlike a semi-solid where if it's slightly different when you blend it, you might see stripes. Here, blending it wouldn't give you stripes because the color swatch would be a bit variegated and mottled to begin with. The yarn mop is soft and lovely and has a lot of the same tones, but is softer and a little paler overall. You could definitely fade these together. It would be very, very subtle. And I think that the transition between the two wouldn't give stripes. I think that you could really smoothly go from one to the other, even though the colors here are softer, there's less speckles, but there's not a lot of contrast between the two skeins. So while you could definitely use them together, uh, especially as part of a larger fade project, uh, without a lot of contrast, you might not want to use them if you wanted to have some differentiation between things with similar colors, but aren't too similar. Is that making sense? Like they're very similar, they're different, so you could fade them in a very clean way, but it also will be very subtle. <laughs> if it's possible, I like this colorway even more twisted up. But you can see how twisted, and it's just the way it's twisted, but this one looks like there's more purple. Doesn't necessarily mean that this one has more purple than the other two. It just means that, well, we see more purple the way it's twisted. <laughs> And then here is our yarn mop, which overall is a lot more pastel, a little bit more gray. The blued steel speckles, I think might make a little bit more of a presence when it's knit up. They, you see the speckles there, but the hue you aren't really feeling when you look at the overall colorway, you're seeing mostly the green and the purple. But I think that this was a really fun color to use for speckles because since, if you think about it, blue is part of both purple and green, and so I think it just ties everything together really nicely. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Dye Pop PS. Once again, please go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can learn more about it over at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. But the biggest thing you could do to help support content here is subscribe, turn on notifications, and give the video a thumbs up. The more you watch and engage with the videos, the more YouTube is likely to recommend it to other people. And if you want to bring home some of my hand-dyed yarn, head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, which is filled with dozens of skein, skeins of hand-dyed yarn featured in my videos. Plus, there is the 2023 Chemnitz Hanukkah yarn sampler, uh, and yeah, I'll have that linked down below. I'm absolutely considering playing with more of these color palettes, even if they weren't like as highly ranked in the poll. In particular, there's a cocktail one, and I think that the colors, wherever I found these images and pulled them from, 
the colors that they suggest for the palette is something that just really intrigues me and I think that that one's pretty cool. But feel free to let me know down in the comments which one of these you think that I should dive next. I'm sorry about indie barking outside. <laughs> but anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.